In this lesson, we'll cover the user interface. The main part of the Revit MEP user interface is the ribbon. The ribbon consists of various tabs. Those tabs have panels, and the panels contain various icons for that functional area. For MEP, we'll mostly focus on the Systems tab, what you see on my screen right now. This contains the majority of the functional commands for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. But depending on the flavor of Revit you have installed, you may also have a tab for architecture. This would allow you to also create architectural elements, such as walls, maybe some doors, a floor, a railing, or a staircase. You may also have a structural tab. This would allow me to create a load-bearing wall, or place beams, or braces inside of my Revit model. But again, though, we'll mostly focus on the Systems tab for MEP. Now, the additional tabs after that are kind of general tabs you'll see in all the flavors of Revit. First one is Insert. This allows me to link in other non-Revit files, such as a CAD file maybe that contains a detail that you want to show on your schematic or your sheet. The tab after that is Annotate. Pretty much what it says, it's for your annotation. So your dimension tools, your elevation marks, your text, your tags, different keynotes, all of these are here on the Annotate tab. The Analyze tab contains all the tools to let me analyze this model and other related models. So I can look at different load scenarios. I can look at clash detection. And there's a variety of different reports that already come with the system. And I can see that if I move over reports and let the flyout appear, I have different reports for different panel schedules, for different pressure drops. You also have the ability to look at different checks. So I can check my systems. I can check for interference fits. You also have the ability to look at different analysis for energy. And we'll cover all these when we get to the analysis section of this course. The tab after that is massing in sight. Primarily, this is a conceptual design tab where you can start to conceptually design shapes and then make those shapes into structural or mechanical elements within your BIM model. There's also a part, though, for site elements right in the middle of your screen on this tab where I can create topography. I can enter in different landscape elements, trees, parking lots, cars, automobiles, people, if you will. The tab after that is Collaborate. And this is where we would get into working in a multi, let's say, discipline environment where I have an architect using Revit architecture, other structural engineers using Revit structure, and me, a mechanical engineer, I'm using Revit MEP. But we're going to work on the model all at the same time, so we would need to collaborate, if you will. So when one person makes a change in their system, I see that change and vice versa. The tab after that is View. This controls what you see. So the layout of the model of how you want to look at this. So plan view, elevation view, a section view, the thickness of my lines or my line weight. You want to clip any of these views. Also, if you're looking at multiple windows, how do I tile my screen? Or how do you change your user interface? Meaning what happens if you turn parts of the screen off, the properties palette or the project browser? Well, the user interface icon on the right is where you can turn these elements back on. The tab after that is manage. This is basically all the settings, all the controls for setting up and maintaining all the elements in Revit MEP and associated files. So for example, my MEP settings are in the settings area where I can control the mechanical settings, electrical settings, maybe some load classification settings for my analysis tools. And the last tab is modify. These are your general tools that are used across all discipline for modifying elements, like moving things or rotating things, or aligning elements from one to another. Now, other elements will appear and different parts of your screen will change depending on what you click. For example, all the way over here on the left is my properties area. This shows me the property of the view that I'm currently looking at since I have nothing clicked. But however, if I were to click a piece of the ductwork, doesn't matter which piece, I'm just going to click. What happens is the properties area changes, showing me the properties of whatever I clicked, in this case the duct. Also, at the very top, I have two new tabs. The first tab is allowing me to modify whatever I clicked, in other words, this piece of duck. The second tab is the system that that element belongs to, and I can change it. Now, Also, in the middle of your screen, or right below the ribbon, is the options bar. This shows you the options for the various elements that you select, so you can change those dimensional values there. Now, to get rid of those elements so you don't see the tabs or the option bar goes away or the properties palette goes back to the view, simply just deselect or click anywhere in the white area of your screen, and all those elements that just appeared will now disappear and go away. Now, another part of your screen over on the left in the lower area is the project browser. It contains all of the views, all of the different elevations, all of the legends, 
and all of the other elements that you load into this BIM model or what you create in the BIM model. Again, we'll go through this in one of the additional chapters. At the very bottom of your screen is the view control bar. This lets you set the level of detail, also lets you look at or set whether you're looking at a wireframe mode, a shaded mode, or maybe a realistic rendering of this BIM model. You also have the ability to control shadows, control where your sunlight is at. Another part of your screen is the very bottom. This is the status area, and this shows you the various different status elements for this Revit BIM model. All the way on the top, in the upper left, is your quick launch bar. This is where you can have various icons to do quick tasks, such as saving or opening, undo, redo, look at your text settings, look at a three-dimensional element, your line weights, and all of this can be customized. To the right of that, or over to the right top of your screen, is the area of your help menu, or a lookup area where you can find different commands, find information on how to use things. You can also link to Autodesk Exchange by the X. And then again, the drop down is the question mark for finding help or what's new within the tool you're using. You have your view icon, view cube, if you will, to control the different various views, which is over on the right. You also can use your keyboard keys or your mouse. And then the last element is the large R in the upper left. If you click on that, that will display a lot of what you saw on the quick launch bar. But here you also have the options button. The options button is very similar to the settings allowing you to control the various options within Revit MEP.